I'm using source control in between all of my videos, and I decided, let's go back to an older version of the project, something we did early on in the playlist, and I reverted back to one of the earliest ones. We have our nice red-green-blue triangle. Here are the attributes of the triangle. That's the red attributes. That's the, these are, these are, that's the, these are the green attributes, and these are the blue ones. You can see that we have a red color right here. We have a green color right here. We have a blue color right here. Hopefully that makes sense. Then the positional data are the first two attributes. We got zero and one, negative one, negative one, one, and negative one. Let me bring the triangle back up and we can see that this is vertex zero right here, vertex one, vertex two. Red, green, blue, zero, one, two. And recall that the hardware, it doesn't care about 3D. In fact, the graphics card knows nothing about 3D. That's something we do with model view projection matrices and all that fun stuff. But in the end, we have to give a two-dimensional screen coordinate to OpenGL. And at that point, the hardware takes over and does everything in two-dimensional space. And so since culling is a hardware feature, culling is done in two-dimensional space as well. Let's go to initialize GL here and I'm going to say GL enable just like we did in the previous video GL cull face. Okay, Turn on culling. I'll control F5 this, build this and run this. Our triangle still renders to the screen because this triangle is considered front facing meaning we're looking at the front of this triangle. We have vertex 0, 1, 2. This is a front facing triangle. Let me reverse this though. We're drawing this triangle from 0 to 1 to 2. Instead I'm going to change it up and draw from 0 to 2 to 1. Or I could do 2 to 1 to 0 or 1 to 0 to 2. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go the opposite direction. I'm going to change what's known as the winding order of our triangle. Here are the indices that indicate the order 0, 1, 2. Let's simply reverse it. Instead of 0, 1, 2 I'll go 0, two, one, control F5, build this and run this, and you'll see that our triangle is now gone. Our triangle is not rendered. Our triangle is considered facing away from the scene, and so all the fragments, the, the, the culling discarded our triangle, and the triangle is no longer rendered. And just to prove to you that I can do whatever I want here, I'm going to say two to one to zero, control F5, build that, run that. The triangle will still not render because of the winding order. Let me demonstrate winding order a little bit better. I'm going to say 0, 1, 2, Control F5, build that, run that. That should bring our triangle back, which it does. This is vertex 0, vertex 1, vertex 2. When I render 0, 1, 2, or 1, 2, 0, or 2, 0, 1, doesn't matter. My winding order is like so. I'm winding this direction, counterclockwise if you would. When I gave it 0, 2, 1 or 2, 1, 0 or whatever, I was going the opposite direction or clockwise. I was winding this direction. When the vertices wind clockwise, the triangle is considered facing away from the screen. We're looking at the back side of the triangle and thus the triangle is not rendered. Now we can actually go as far as saying instead of don't blink, Okay, we got our numbers back, 0, 1, 2. Instead of the front facing being counterclockwise, we could say that front facing is actually clockwise instead. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Maybe your data is different. Maybe you're working in a left-handed coordinate system. You're trying to render in a right-handed coordinate system. Something weird like that. But I can go down here and initialize GL. And I can say GL front face. The front face of the triangle is determined by the clockwise direction. So when I control F5 this, right now we're rendering in the counterclockwise direction, but I'm saying, hey, the front of the triangle is actually in the clockwise direction. When I control F5 on this, build this, run this, you see our triangle is now gone because the hardware thinks that the back of the triangle is facing us. So there's no reason to render that triangle. So that's possible as well. You can say clockwise. You can you can invert the winding order, but the default is counterclockwise. The triangle's front face is facing us when the winding order is counterclockwise. I'll control the five of this. We have our triangle back, so counterclockwise is the default value. I'm going to take that out, though I never, ever mess with that. I do enable cooling low quite often. And this also brings up another point. 
When you build geometries by hand or you load up data from an external program, you need to make sure that the winding order for every single triangle in the scene is the same. And in OpenGL, you need to make sure that winding order is counterclockwise. For example, you saw the teapot and you saw the arrow in previous videos. And with the teapot, the algorithm generates the winding order, that algorithm that I downloaded from the internet and I showed you, so I don't need to worry about that. But on that arrow, as I was constructing that arrow by hand, using graph paper, I got the arrow up nice and dandy, but a lot of my triangles were not drawing. Some of them were there and some of them were not. And I realized the reason why some of those triangles were missing is because I messed up the winding order. I was not consistent with the winding order of my triangles, and I had to then go back and mess with all my indices and, and make sure that the winding order was correct. In fact, just for tickles, don't blink, let me show you. I love source control. It allows me to jump around here in time. We're back to where we were at, and we have the make arrow, and here's all the vertices, but then down here, I have my indices, and if I change the winding order of some of these indices, for example, here's the top of the triangle, it looks like. Let's just change the winding order. Instead of 0, 1, 2, I'll say 0, 2, 1. Control F5, build this and run this. And we'll go look at the top of our triangle and we'll see, or not triangle, the top of our arrow. And you can see that part of the arrow is missing. Okay, that top triangle right there, this top triangle right here is missing because we changed the winding order. These three vertices are not winding counterclockwise anymore. They're winding clockwise and clockwise winding means that the triangles is facing away from the screen we need no long we don't need to worry about rendering these fragments however if i come over here we're not seeing the inside of the triangle because all of the winding order are not triangles we're not seeing the inside of the arrow because the winding order for all of those triangles inside is correct but if i come over here to the right oh look look the winding order indicates hey this these two triangles there's actually two triangles making up the face of this, I think they go something like this. Here's one, and here's the, uh, well, that's terrible, but you get the idea, there's two triangles there. The winding order indicates, oh, they're facing the screen now, we need to render those those greenish, ugly triangles, and I just completely lost where I was at. Let me, there we go. There we go, so, anyway, look at that, you can see, as I move to the right, and move to the left, those triangles right here as they become more and more front facing we we see their fragments show up their pixels anyway that's that's how cooling works is with winding order uh, if, if it's counterclockwise meaning the vertices are counterclockwise then that triangle is considered facing the screen again this happens all in 2d nothing in 3d it happens all in 2d by the hardware the triangle is facing the screen if the winding order is counterclockwise, but if it goes clockwise, then the triangle is not facing the screen. And we save all the time. We don't have to render all the fragments inside of that triangle. Now, in the next video, I'm actually going to show you the algorithm, the mathematical way in which the hardware determines whether a triangle is facing the screen or not. We have all these vertices. How do we figure out if they're clockwise or if they're counterclockwise? I'll show you the algorithm in the next video.